Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinkerer Studio. In this series of tutorials, we will be exploring the basics of Godot 3D. These tutorials are based on the Godot docs. The link is in the description. In this tutorial, we will be learning the basics of Godot, including basic level design and character movement. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more Blender and Godot tutorials. So let's get on with the tutorial. Open the project from the first tutorial. We will be making a simple game level for our player to explore. Open the imported mesh folder and select all the block meshes. Under the import tab, change the root type to static body. And click on re-import. Repeat this process for any other meshes you want to use as static bodies. Now make a new folder in the project for the meshes that you will be using. Now choose a mesh to import. I'm going to use the block level. Double click on the mesh to open it in a new scene. Choose new inherited. Then add a collision shape to it using the mesh drop down menu and choosing create convex collision siblings. And save the scene to the new folder you created. Now open up the last scene that you created in the last tutorial, the one with the barrels. Choose the spatial node and click on the link. Then search for the scene that you just created. And instant a mesh to the scene. Make sure that you actually have the scene chosen. In order to snap the mesh duplicates together, under the Transform drop-down menu, choose Configure Snap. Change the Translate Snap to 0.5. When you turn on the snap, which is the magnet at the top of the 3D viewport, the mesh will actually snap in 0.5 increments. Continue to use the meshes and make a basic game level. And when you're done, save your scene. Our player will be a kinematic body. Kinematic bodies are special types of bodies that are meant to be user controlled. They are not affected by physics at all. Create a new scene. Choose other node. And search for kinematic body 3D. Rename the kinematic body node to player. Add a mesh instance 3D. As a child of the kinematic body 3D. Then in the inspector, choose a capsule for the mesh. We'll open the transform section and rotate the mesh around the x-axis 90 degrees. Change the translation of the y-axis to 1.5. This way it will sit on the ground. Choose your player node 
and add a collision shape 3D as a child. In the inspector, choose cylinder for the shape. And twirl open the transform section. And if needed, you can rotate the collision shape to match the shape of the capsule. Change the translation of the y-axis to 1.5. Choose the mesh instance. And in the inspector, under the geometry section, add a new spatial material. Click on the material. Open the albedo section and give the player a color. And then save the scene. Under the project drop down menu, choose project settings. Under the input map tab, add an action called move underscore forward. Then click on add. Click on the plus button to the right of the action to add an event. Choose key and press the W key on the keyboard. Then click OK. Then add a second key and press the up arrow on the keyboard and click OK. Add another action and name it move underscore backward. And assign the S key and the down arrow key. Add another action called move underscore right. Assign the D key and the right arrow key. Add another action called move underscore left. and assign the A key and the left arrow key. Add another action called jump. And assign the space bar to it. Then when you're finished, close the dialog box. Select the player, which is the parent node. Then click on the script icon above the nodes. We will be using GDScript, which is similar to Python. We'll leave all the options at their default. Make sure you're following all the indents that I'm using. Otherwise, the script won't work. Tab is used for indenting. Click Create. Now we need to start by setting our variables. Speed will determine the speed at which the player moves. So var speed equals 150. Direction will be used to determine the direction of the player. So var direction equals vector 3. The vector 3 means that direction will be available to us on all three axes. The ready function is called when the node in the scene is ready. The 
process function is called every frame of the game. We will be using the physics process function, which is called on every physics frame of the game. So I'm function underscore physics underscore process delta. Delta refers to time. We also need to reset the direction variable. So direction equals vector 3 and we'll set all the axes to 0. Now we need to check and see if an action is pressed. We will first check for the left button. So if input dot is action pressed move underscore left. If the left button is pressed, then we need to define what happens. So if the left button is pressed, then we need to move along the x-axis with the amount of direction set to 1. Direction.x minus equals 1. Now copy and paste these two lines of code three times. Change the second set of lines of codes to move right. with a direction of plus equals 1. Change the third set of lines of code to move forward and this will be along the z-axis with minus equals 1 and change the fourth set of lines of code to move backward again along the z-axis with plus equal one. Now we also need to normalize the direction. Normalizing the direction tells the Player to go at the same speed in that direction. Direction equal direction oops, dot normalized. We can also make the player move a bit faster by adding a line of code. Direction equals direction times speed times delta. Next we need to tell the player to stop when it hits something. The move and slide function stops the kinematic body, the player, when it hits something. We use direction to tell it where to move and a vector 3 to move up on the y-axis. So move and slide and it's direction comma vector 3 0 for the x-axis, 1 for the y-axis, and 0 for the z-axis. Now save your scene. Now go back to your main scene and click on 3D. Then add an instance of the player.
We'll open the transform section and scale the player as desired. And save your scene. Now play your scene and use both the arrow keys and the WASD keys to make sure that everything is moving as it should. Now we're going to make the camera follow the player. The easiest way to do this is to make the camera a child of the player. We can do this by moving the camera node onto the player node. And if we play our game again, we notice that the camera is following the player. Now we need to add a variable for gravity so our player will actually fall. Under the script on the player scene, add a variable for gravity. Var gravity equals negative 9.8. We also need to add a variable for velocity since gravity is cumulative. Var velocity equals vector 3. We need to now set the velocity of y. velocity dot y plus equals gravity times delta. In this case, delta or time gives us a fraction of the gravity. Otherwise, falling would occur too fast. We also need to call the direction of the x and z axes. So velocity dot x equals direction dot x and velocity dot x and velocity dot z equals direction dot z. We need to now change the direction of the move and slide to velocity. So down here where we had the original move and slide, add velocity equals move and slide and change direction to velocity. Then leave everything else the same. Save your scene and go back to your main scene and play the scene. Now you notice that our player will actually fall. Now we want to enable the player to jump. So back on the script for our player, we need to add a variable for the jump. So var jump speed equals 6. We need to determine if the player is on the floor and the action is taking place. If is on floor and input dot is action pressed 
Then we need to call the jump. Then if the player is on the floor and the space bar is pressed, we need to tell the player what to do. In this case, we need to set the velocity. So velocity dot y equals the jump speed. Save your scene. Go back to your main scene and play the game. And we hit spacebar, you see that our player will now jump. This is the end of part three. In the next tutorial, we will be learning how to make interactive objects and basic lighting. If you found this useful, please leave a like and subscribe. Have a good day.